dull openings might just be one of the most intriguing and astounding characteristics in the universe. They are huge beasts concerning force, however at a similar time essentially intangible to us. A dull opening weighing perhaps two to four times the mass of the sun, yet because of the assessment that was placed into them over the last a few numerous years, we've gone from knowing in a don't real sense anything about them to getting to find out progressively more extremely close and individual. And remembering that things have absolutely gotten more crazy, Makaku as of late proclaimed that we've at last gotten a gander at what's inside a dim opening. Furthermore, this new information conveys light to the nuances the universe of science might have missed from the start. Oblige us as we dig more significant into dull openings and uncover what's inside. Space is H gigantic, horrible. Before we plunge into the nuances of what Makaku found, we really want to talk about the first. Notwithstanding the reality that by far most of us have some thought what dim openings are, there are still a couple of openings in the right information. You see, in 1916, Albert Einstein conveyed his hypothesis of general relativity, which expected the presence of dim openings. Around then, the possibility of dull openings was basically speculative. It took an additional 50 years for standard specialists to see as proof that dull openings as a matter of fact exist. This happened during the 1960s. They were thinking about the Cygnus X1 star gathering at the point when they saw an oddly stunning blue star that was emanating X-beams. The star was surely not a flat thing, but rather was circumventing a beast dull something. Upon additional assessment, it was seen that the X-rays weren't just moving around all alone, but they were being sucked into the dim thing they were orbiting. In this manner, the name Dull Opening was conceived to open this revelation. It gave affirmation that dull openings, as a matter of fact, exist and that they were not just a creation of Albert Einstein's wild imaginative psyche. While that was exceptional, it additionally implied that there was this shocking substance in space that we genuinely needed to find out about. So researchers from one side of the planet to the next got to work. This dull opening was named Cygnus X1, and it is arranged in the gathering of stars Cygnus, encompassing 6,000 light a very long time from Earth. It was no little disclosure. It's on numerous occasions more splendid than the sun and impossibly thick, which causes it to have a strong gravitational draw. The gravitational draw is serious to the point that not in any event, light can move away from it. Therefore, it is known as a dull opening. The possibility of a dim opening is both intriguing and a neighborhood to terrify. It's a spot in space where gravity is strong to such a degree that nothing, not in any event, light can bypass. Whatever gets excessively close to a dim opening will be maneuvered into it, gone forever. Yet, that part of danger makes it substantially more vital to realize all that there is to acknowledge about them. Was this it? Or were we just beginning? The response twisted up being the last choice. After the disclosure of Cygnus X-1, analysts started to search for other dull openings. They found that there may be close to more than 100 million dim openings in the smooth way alone. However, since they are so incredibly hard to distinguish, we actually don't have a distinct number. Yet, ultimately, from the energies of it, there are two or three million dim openings in the smooth manner in our actual framework, which makes them substantially more critical to think about. So, let's isolate it. The essential concern with dim openings is continually going to be gravity. Their gravitational attract is serious to the point that anything that enters it packs down enormously until it transforms into a singularity. In more clear terms, dim openings resemble huge vacuum cleaners that suck everything in. One of the most disturbing aspects about the assessment that has gone into dull openings is the truth that if someone somehow ended up falling into one, they would stop fooling around and become a single line. This change would happen gradually, and the person would pass on before the last design sets in. So we should essentially say that no one should step into one. They're all over the place. So might we anytime genuinely be in danger? Despite the way that the closest dull opening to Earth is 500 light years away, it's very near. Arouse different types of criticism. In 2021, scientists had the choice to convey the primary clear photograph of a dull opening, specifically the M87 dull opening. This dull opening was shot a couple of nights in progression, and with every photograph, the experts collected to an ever-increasing degree proof about it. They expected to join the photos together to make something that filled all of the openings. This way, they had the choice to figure out that there are three layers to a dim opening. 
It's not just one single growing opening of nothingness, as many people acknowledge. Things are essentially more complicated than that. To attempt to get to the nothingness part of a dim opening, you really want to make it through the initial two layers. The first layer is known as the event horizon, which, while in the main layer, is the last defining moment. Once you pass the event horizon, there's absolutely not a chance other than straight ahead. Furthermore, you will be sucked into the dim opening. It just falls apart starting there on out. The resulting layer is the photon circle, which is the locale where light circles the dim opening. Any light that enters this locale will be gotten and can't move away from the dim opening's gravitational draw. Finally, we come to the third layer, which is the characteristic. This is where everything that enters the dull opening gets compacted down vastly until it transforms into a singularity. The singularity is a point in space-time where the laws of physical science as we presumably know them isolated, and we can't guess what happens straight away at the characteristic. The thickness is unlimited, and the laws of physical science as we understand them neglect to exist. Presently, what makes this unendingly more unfortunate is the reality that each further and every dull opening you study will be absolutely not equivalent to the last. Sure, they do for the most part follow something almost identical three-layer con thought. Yet, the way they ability could be amazingly different. At this point, accepting this were much else, all we'd expect to do is return on those telescopes. What's all the more, basically focus on the fundamental thing in detail. However, with dim openings, you can't genuinely do that. Specialists would be able to concentrate on dull openings by suggestion, by seeing the radiation they release, also the gas and buildup that encompasses them. Sending a test like the Pioneer in inside a dull opening is unfeasible. In light of the way that whatever enters the event horizon is pulled towards the singularity where it is compacted to a vastly little point. So you can't just waste billions of dollars just to get an impression each time because the second the test gravitates toward enough, it'll simply crush into nothingness. Along these lines, in evident issue, analysts are left with no decision with the exception of to focus on these things in a two-layered manner. In spite of the fact that they are three-layered characteristics, to make matters significantly more interesting, there are also the two challenges of every single dull opening being exceptional, and the laws of material science as we understand them separating when we attempt to examine inside. This implies that the customary methods for scientific demands don't really apply to the survey of dull openings. That doesn't really mean that the subject matter experts haven't been occupied. There are lots of different theories and explanations of dull openings. And well, with each one, things get to an always expanding degree intriguing. One of the most persuading speculations about the advancement of dull openings is that they are produced using fallen stars. When a star exhausts all of its fuel, it can at absolutely no point in the future make enough energy to really test the force of gravity that is consistently pulling inward. Accordingly, the star starts to separate in on itself, diminishing what's more, denser as it does. On the off chance that the star is gigantic enough, this cycle can continue until it transforms into a singularity. To understand the possibility of dull openings in profundity, NASA analysts turned their thought to the focal point of the universe, M87. Space specialists saw a truly amazing whirlpool of extremely hot hydrogen gas that was turning at a stunning speed of 1.2 million miles per hour. The sheer force of this turning plate of gas should have made it fly isolated in all violently headings, yet it didn't. Researchers found that there should be a monstrous mass assembled at the central place of the world to keep this from happening. This immense article weighed as much as a few billion suns and should be a dim opening. However, that isn't using any and all means the main hypothesis. With dull openings, turn. In 1963, the New Zealand mathematician Roy Kerr used Einstein's states of gravity to give the best portrayal of a turning dim opening. Kerr showed that a turning dull opening would fall into a point, as of late thought at this point to a ring of fire or a small plate. The circle would turn so rapidly that unique powers would keep it from collapsing. This turning plate of matter is known as the ergosphere, and it is the neighborhood encompassing the dim opening where the laws of physical science start to separate. However, the most captivating component of Kerr's arrangement was that it expected the presence of an Einstein-Rosen platform, otherwise called a wormhole. This is a hypothetical passage through space-time that partners two separate regions of the universe or even two equivalent universes. 
The thought is that assuming one were to fall into a dim opening, instead of being crushed to haziness, one would be sucked down a path through the ring of fire and shot out a white opening in an equivalent universe. To sort out how this works, we need to look at the thought of space-time in Einstein's hypothesis. Reality isn't free components but instead are interconnected, framing a four-layer surface called space-time. Objects with mass contort this surface, making a gravitational field that makes other items move towards them. Right now, envision a piece of paper tending to space-time. Assuming you place two core interests on the paper and characterize a limit between them, this is a portrayal of how articles travel through space-time. Yet consider how conceivable it is that you could overlay the paper into two halves and make a simple course between the two focuses. This is the fundamental thought behind a wormhole. It's a simple course through space-time that points of interaction excessively far off focuses in a second. Wormholes aren't just a science fiction thought. They are, as an issue of reality, an assumption of general relativity. However, no one has at any point seen one directly. The explanation is that wormholes are intrinsically temperamental and would break down very rapidly. However, the presence of an Einstein-Rosen framework would suggest that dim openings are not just endless vacuum cleaners but could likewise be passages to various local people of space-time. So, could we any time use a wormhole to go through? Anyway, tragically, the answer is probably no, not yet. Regardless of whether we could adjust the fact that we makes out a wormhole, it's unrealistic to use it to travel faster than light. Einstein's hypothesis of phenomenal relativity predicts that the speed of light is an absolute cutoff on how fast anything can go through space-time. However, that being said, the possibility of wormhole openings and dim openings as pathways to various pieces of the universe or even to different times has been a subject of interest and hypothesis among physicists for a long time. Maybe even indefinitely. The prospect that there might be substitute courses through the surface of space-time, allowing travel through tremendous ranges or even into the past, could pass sooner or later. Possibly be moderate in case we could actually achieve one of the most captivating thoughts around here of study is the canine wormhole which is named after the mathematician Royer, who at first portrayed it using Einstein's states of gravity. This kind of wormhole is fundamentally a theoretical path through space-time that might communicate two at some point faraway core interests, like two particular universes or even two novel times inside something very comparable universe. The Mutt wormhole is frequently envisioned as a ring-shaped entryway, like the mirror in the narrative of Alice in Wonderland. Walking through a different universe transported Alice to an existence where animals talked in riddles and reasoning didn't necessarily apply. Similarly, going through the mutt ring could transport a voyager to another universe or some other time where the laws of material science might be entirely unexpected from those we are familiar with. However, at this point, that could just be standard. While the considered wormholes for interstellar travel or time travel is certainly exciting, as we've discussed previously, it's also a subject of dispute and exchange among physicists. Some have raised that wormholes and particularly mutt wormholes might be unstable or hard to explore due to the exceptional radiation and nuclear powers involving their entrance. The intellectuals fight that Einstein's states of gravity, which are used to portray wormholes and dim openings, simply work for gravity and not the quantum powers that manage radiation and subatomic particles. To grasp the nature really of these idiosyncrasies, Another speculation is required that can join the laws of gravity with the quantum speculation of radiation all through the universe of science. This is known as a theory of everything, a singular theory that can join both Einstein's theory of gravity with the quantum speculation. Makaku, who's a prominent theoretical physicist, has been dealing with a theory of everything for a long time too. While there are piles of different types of what this could be, the one specifically that has shown in sure is superstring theory. Superstring theory joins gravity with the speculation of radiation. The theory suggests that subatomic particles are truly little vibrating strings, and that the universe is an ensemble of these strings, in basically the same manner as different melodic notes interact with different vibrations of a violin string. Different particles in nature interact with different vibrations of a superstring. One of the intriguing things about superstring theory is that as a string moves in time, it bends the surface of space around it, conveying dull openings, wormholes, and other amazing arrangements. 
This expects that superstring theory not just combines Einstein's theory of gravity with the quantum theory, but it also figures out a seriously huge number of the perplexing idiosyncrasies that we find in the universe. Yet, there's something about this theory that honestly wrecks how essential it might sound at first. Anyway, in a way, it makes more sense too. The superstring theory requires 10 components of spacetime in which the strings can vibrate. This is extremely not quite the same as the three components of room and one component of time that we experience in our customary encounters. Imagining what is problematic about these extra viewpoints might resemble. Yet, physicists have encouraged some contextual models that can assist us with understanding. Consider a two layered lake moved by fish that are, figuratively speaking, aware of the parts of length and width. To these fish, there is no such thing as level, and they can't even imagine what it might be really like to live in a three-layered world.